7.35 on this October 15th time for Third Thursday with Jack Clayton of Nature's Way, the health food store in the square. And once again, here's Jack Clayton. Well, thanks, Dale. Uh, today I want to talk about something that we're headed into as we come into fall and January and February particularly um, in this area and basically all around the country. And that's how you support your immune system through these uh, kind of seasonal things that we see, flu, cold, uh, and other even more serious issues. Now, I've always said this, and, I, and I'm going to restate it today. If you, if you feel okay, you tend to ignore things. It's not until you get sick that you start paying attention to what's going on. You know, we spend more time thinking about what we're going to put on our bodies and what we put in them. And at the end of the day, our immune systems are what keep us healthier is what your body ability to keep yourself healthy and I want to caution people I want to caution us all in the first few minutes of this conversation and tell you that if you have an autoimmune disease like lupus rheumatoid arthritis uh, MS HIV AIDS etc anything that has a uh, uh, an immune system disorder connection to it you you need to be sure you're telling whoever you buy your supplements from that in advance because it can change the kinds of advice that you might get in such stores. Uh, it's important uh, to know that uh, certain natural products may not be appropriate for people who are suffering from autoimmune disease issues. And remember, that's things like lupus and most commonly lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and then less commonly MS and, and HIV and those kinds of things. Uh, also, if you're undergoing any chemotherapies or uh, cancer treatments, uh, you need to make that very clear too because there's some contraindications there. All of that will be handled by folks, if you're dealing with businesses who know what they're talking about, the, the, those kind of things will be handled by the, the folks that you talk to in those stores. So let's talk a little bit about the immune system, what it is and how it actually uh, works. And, the, and, and then I want to leave you with a, a couple of basic things that I think can be very helpful as far as supporting your immune system through uh, the winter season and through the cold and flu season. We don't catch colds really from cold. We catch colds from people. We catch colds from airborne issues, uh, uh, physical contact, uh, a, a dirty pen on a desk. Uh, what about walking outside with wet hair? Not really. That, that's so. that, not not really. Where this, these are inhaled issues. They you tend to you tend to bring it in through your nose. You touch your eyes. You, you touch your mouth. You you know we do that abstractly. So this is how you catch these viral issues. But your immune system is is designed to try to fight those things off before they get a hold of you. It's when where our immune systems become somewhat suppressed or we aren't really taking care of ourselves that we tend to get sicker quicker. So what do we mean by immune system and essentially what we what it is is uh, that you have an innate system of skin uh, mucosal membranes the GI tract and essentially they stand as an army to react to invaders like cold or flu uh, you also have an adaptive or an acquired immune system that is gained from immune cells coming into contact with invaders and producing antibodies think of an army You've got uh, a, an army of immune system fighters that detect invaders. We call those antigens. They send out little soldiers. We call those white blood cells and, and certain chemicals, which we call cytokines, on a search and destroy mission. And their job is to, is to let your body fight things off naturally. And you can do some things that are very helpful as far as allowing your body to do that naturally. And uh, there's, there's two of these I'm going to get to in just a minute that I think are absolutely critical, and, and I use myself, and we are um, really very big on. Okay. We're born with this immune system in us. If you look at a cow and a calf, for example, the colostrum that the mother emits immediately as after the calf is born is what provides its ability 
to fight off infections and disease unless that calf survives. So that colostrum, which you can actually buy colostrum separately, you can buy it. They, they don't they don't extract it uh, from the first milkings because that's for the calf. But uh, colostrum is uh, based on how deep into the milking process you go, the further away from the birth of the calf, the weaker the colostrum. And so colostrum products are available that support the immune system. And it's very similar to what we're doing, what the mother cow is doing with its calf. It's trying to support its immune system principally through its uh, GI tract. But most of us have rather compromised immune systems. And why is that? And then mostly it's because of our diets and what we don't do in, here in the United States as far as the food is concerned. Now, we've talked at length about that in the past uh, here on these programs, and we've talked about uh, what you really know what you ought to be eating. And, and I always tell people, you know, your mom told you what you should be eating. You're just not doing it. It's the idea of getting up in the morning and skipping breakfast, running through the, running through the fast food lane and talking into the clown to order lunch. It, it's, uh, and we do that over and over again, and eventually your body can't produce the, uh, the antigens or the white blood cells or the, or the cytokines that can go out and, and, and work as this army to keep your immune system uh, uh, supported. So we get mad about that. And wonder what it is we did wrong. We run to the doctor. Doctors can't do much with viral issues. Uh, they can kind of placebo you through the process. Take this for seven days, you'll get better. Don't take this for seven days, you'll get better. And uh, so at the end of the day, why does this happen in the first place? And it really is related to how we're eating. So diet comes first. Uh, bright, colorful vegetables are important in all of this product. Uh, lean meats, uh, we... we tend to avoid red meats for a particular reason, although I wouldn't ever tell anybody not to eat any of it. But you want to kind of, you want to trim that down, eat more fish, chicken, that sort of thing. In short, the choices about what you eat make the difference. So what nutrients then are extremely important to all of this? And there's a couple I want to talk about first, and then I'm going to talk about, the, I think, the most important ones as we come back after the break. First of all, you want to talk about vitamin A. Now, some of these things you're going to be getting from your multivitamin. When you go in to buy a multivitamin, you should ask a series of questions. We talked about this a couple of months ago uh, as to what really what your needs are as far as your uh, diet is concerned and, and, and the things that you're willing to do. Now, you can just throw a multivitamin in your system. You can buy multivitamins almost anywhere. Uh, and they're little bitty pills and they cover you quite nicely and uh, it makes you think that you're doing the right thing, but it may not be enough to support your immune system. Vitamin A is one of the more important uh, issues here. Think of this in terms of ACEs, A, C, E, and selenium. Yeah. Now, we've used ACEs in the past for eye health, but this is also immune system support because eye health and immune system support are very similar as far as fighting off the bad cells and so ACEs has been the traditional format for this. Vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, and selenium. Vitamin A uh, is typically taken in a beta-carotene form. That's the kind of things you get from colorful vegetables and so on and so forth. It's much safer for you to take it that way. Um, you, you can take up to 25,000 units of that, but you probably don't need to. Uh, anywhere from 800 to 1,000 of vitamin A is, is okay. But make sure that you know what kind of vitamin A that you're getting because some can be toxic if you take too much of it over a length of time. Vitamin C, everybody knows about. Uh, and vitamin C uh, uh, can, is, has a variety of different forms. When you're talking to whoever's selling you your supplements, ask them how it's going to have an impact on your stomach and what forms of it might be better for you if you have a very sensitive tummy. That's usually not too big an issue with vitamin C, but some people don't respond to it very well. Due to the acid levels? Yeah, it has to do just, they just, it's just the way we are as human beings. There's some people that just, some of us just, are, we have a kind of an acidic response to vitamin C. Uh, so there are forms that can be safer for you to take or easier for you to take. Usually uh, people will take about 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, that's generally enough. Uh, you can take massive amounts of it if you want to, but I, I don't think there's much evidence that, uh, in spite of what Linus Pauling says, I don't think there's a great deal of evidence that says that huge amounts are going to make a, a significant difference for you. Vitamin E is an interesting story. Uh, vitamin E will 
you probably want to stay around 400 units a day. And you'll want to take a look at vitamin E as far as what you have in your multivitamin. You may have about that much in a multivitamin. And I would not encourage people to take more vitamin E unless their doctor is involved in it. Uh, there's some – vitamin E comes and goes as far as trends are concerned. But um, – uh, right now, we're, we would say the safe dose on vitamin E would be around 400, what we call international units, which is similar to a milligram. So, and you want to stay with what we, what we also know as um, natural vitamin E's, uh, which is, is, is how you read the labels on that. So ask that question when you get to your store, is this a natural vitamin E? Selenium is also extremely important. We generally don't get much selenium uh, unless you're eating a a lot of sardines, but uh, around 200 micrograms, not milligrams, but micrograms is going to be about the maximum dose of selenium that you want to take. So there's ACEs, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, and selenium. And those are extremely important. Time for a quick break. More Third Thursday with Jack Clayton right after this. Be right back. 749, we want to continue Third Thursday with Jack Clayton from Nature's Way, the health food store on the square. Jack? We were talking about immune system support through the cold and flu season and how if you do a few things rather easily, you can uh, em enhance your body's ability to fight off uh, these uh, invaders that we call viral infections and, and flus and things like that that we s hear about. You know, uh, we, we never know exactly what's going to happen with the viral season. I mean, the, the flu shot last year, was for the wrong flu, I think, if I remember correctly. And But, you know, flu shots are encouraged by uh, a lot of folks. But I think that as far if you can keep your immune system up, that you just give yourself so much of a better chance of uh, fighting off these kinds of things. Uh, a couple other things, too, just to mention, just so you don't forget, you know, wash your hands a lot, blow your nose. Uh, if you're around somebody that's sick, uh, uh, Protect yourself and make sure that uh, after that contact that you've washed your hands again, you've cleaned yourself out, and uh, you'll have a better chance of fighting off uh, colds and flus. Two things I want to get, uh, get across, though, and this is absolutely critical, and I think, I think the data on, on these two products, these two things, can be more important than anything I can tell you today, and that is probiotics and vitamin D. Let's start with vitamin D. The data on vitamin D have changed dramatically over the last several years. Uh, when I started uh, at Nature's Way, when we took over Nature's Way about 15 years ago, we would look at vitamin D and say, you know what, about 400 units, so you do it in international units just like vitamin E, uh, about 400 units of vitamin D is uh, enough. Uh, we really don't want to have anybody take more than that. And for children, we really need to take really, really low doses. Well, that's all changed now. And even your government has said, you know, higher doses of vitamin D, 2,000 to 4,000 are perfectly safe. 2,000 to 4,000 I use. I take 5,000 I use of vitamin D every single day, and I have for years. And I will tell you that uh, this is something that you don't get done very often at your doctor. You have to kind of request it, but I had my vitamin D levels checked. I'd been taking 5,000 units at that time. When I had it checked the, for the first time, I'd been taking 5,000 units a day for probably two years. And my vitamin D levels were right in the middle. I mean, just dead center on the charts. And, I mean, I couldn't have been any better, you know. It was just absolutely right. And I, and I thought, well, 5,000 units, that sounds like an awful lot. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm a pasty-faced guy with Norwegian blood and Scottish <laughs> heritage. And, and, uh, and I, I, I put sunscreen on and wear a hat when I go outside, and we all do that, and we don't get out as much as we used to anymore. You could, if you could get, if you could arrange to get 15 minutes of sunshine every day just on your body, uh, you could probably take in 100,000 or more units of really? vitamin D. Yeah, your body synthesizes this. It's a hormone. Yeah. So you, 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 you bring it into your body, but most of us just don't do that. We cover up, you know. Mm. We protect ourselves from the sun. Well... At the end of the day, I think vitamin D is extremely important in this whole process. So I encourage people to take vitamin D, and we now encourage, if you've got a child or a grandchild in the school system here, I mean, it's, 
you may have a wonderful school system wherever you live, but the, at the end of the day, they're hotbeds of disease in there. <laughs> I mean, the yeah. kids, you know, sneezing in each other's faces all day long and, and so on, especially the little ones. So uh, 400 units of vitamin D is now appropriate for children. Hmm. And so I'd highly encourage uh, grandparents and parents of, of kids who are in the school systems to think about uh, supplementing some vitamin D for them. It may be extremely helpful. And all we're trying to do there is just help their bodies fight off the barrage of disease that's coming at them every single day. So vitamin D is extremely important. Now, we sell vitamin D uh, up to 50,000 units, and that's principally used for bone health. I mean, yeah. we, we know now that, that higher doses of vitamin D with calcium are extremely important as far as... Um, uh, getting getting the calcium into your bones, and that's pretty common knowledge. But most supplements that for calcium don't really add that much vitamin D. They're just now catching up to it. So vitamin D, we sell it at the 50,000 unit, but you have to have permission to buy that from your doctor. We don't just, it's not sold over the counter. You, you have to oh, ask okay. us for uh, permission for that, but you have to have a script for it. So uh, vitamin D, I take 5,000 units. Uh, 2,000 is a very typical dose of vitamin D, and I highly encourage you to look at your vitamin D levels and consider that. You may want to talk with your doctor about it, of course. I mean, that's the, that's the common disclaimer, but you want to make sure that you're getting enough vitamin D in your system. The second thing I want to talk about here, and I've got a couple minutes left, is, to, is probiotics. Now, probiotics, probiotics are about gut health, and the whole concept, of immune system really comes from your gastrointestinal tract. So if your gut's not healthy, you can't be healthy. It's that simple. Probiotic, and I take a probiotic every single day, is a critical part of this whole thing as far as general disease is concerned, as far as um, keeping your immune system supported for fungal infections, uh, thrush, for a series of things that, that happen to you, it all really kind of starts in your gut. So Interesting. come in, talk to us about probiotics. This is absolutely a critical thing for you to do. And it doesn't have to be a massive dose, although there are no massive doses of probiotics, which we could talk for an hour just on that topic alone. So talk to whoever you're buying your supplements from. Be sure that you understand what kind of probiotic would be best for you. Uh, there's a variety of different choices on the marketplace, but you but taking one of those every day, taking the vitamin D, and following the path of ACEs can help you support your immune system and keep you healthy through this upcoming fl cold and flu season. Nature's Way, the health food store in the square, where questions are always welcome, answers are always free. Thank you very much. And I'll tell you what, I love coming into Nature's Way. Yeah, thank you very much. We Thanks love to having Jack Clayton you there. for being here today. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Third Thursday. That wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody.